Katie Taylor, who was the mastermind behind this. Unfortunately, her boss did not give her any approval for this event, so she had to work. So, uh, fortunately, I believe we are recording this, so she will actually be able to uh, see her, her project. Um, so, the uh, main theme of this presentation is uh, what to expect in the next five years. Um, this is going to be preparing for your EOC exams, um, first weeks on the job, start strategies for entering the workplace and applying to graduate school. I think you need to be a full presenter today. It's going to be Ashley Osborne. It's not in particular order. Ashley Osborne, uh, Andy Burke, Kevin Leos, and Gene Ryan. Okay, and hopefully everyone is signed in so you can get your extra credit. If not, that'll still be there at the end when you sign in. So I'll take a note. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, and that's going to be Andy Burke. She's a graduate assistant athletic trainer for George Mason University. She works with uh, women's soccer and baseball. Uh, she got her undergrad at College of Charleston, and she's got a two year old daughter, Addison, and she loves her job. Like I said, 
the coach is having expectations, your work ethic needs to be 100%. You need to give 110% in the athletic training room and 110% in the classroom as well. Now, the key is learning how to do this. You don't have to be a superman, you don't have to be a superwoman. It just takes time management, organization skills, and you have to love what you do. If you don't love what you do, you're gonna get burnt out real quick. If you don't learn how to take a Friday night off and go hang out with your friends just to get that social aspect in, plan your hours in the athletic training and stick to them. If you tell your team you're gonna be there at 12.30, start at 12.30. Don't come in at 11 because you will not sit down to do anything. Personal experience, I try to come in at 10 a.m. when we open to get schoolwork done. It does not happen. You mess with every single athlete in that building, not just your own. So you have to learn to balance things. So along with balancing work and school, I get the pleasure of balancing my home life as well. This is my two-year-old daughter. Um, her name is Addison Marie, and she is a fireball. You want to talk about, she is more work than athletic training school combined. So, I am living proof that anything is possible. I'm a full-time grad student. I work 40 plus hours a week. I will leave here and literally get on a bus and go to Delaware for our weekend series this weekend. Anything is possible to put your mind to it. So just have that drive and have that desire to reach your dreams and goals. And those are my friends. No groovy, groovy crowd in that picture. <laughs> All right, and then give me your credentials. APC is probably the three most important letters that I will ever have after my name. I'm proud to be an athletic trainer. I love my job. I've wanted to be an athletic trainer since I was a junior in high school. So keeping my credentials is the most important thing I can do because I want to be an athletic trainer for the rest of my life. CEUs, don't wait till the last year to do them. You can uh, work camps, you can go to clinics. We can't work camps for CEUs, I wish, but. Um, take every opportunity you can. This is um, a picture of me and Steve Lombardozzi. He's a um, baseball player for the Washington Nationals. They had a clinic last year that you got to go meet their head team physician, their head strength and conditioning coach, and their head athletic trainer, and actually talk with these people. You can go in the clubhouse, go on the field, and see their strength and conditioning room. It was actually a great experience, and I got CEUs for it. So not only did I meet all these wonderful people, make new connections with other physical therapists that were at that clinic, I got CEUs. Who knew? It could be fun. Um, the NADA Annual Conference, who's going to it this year? <laughs> Vegas, baby, woo! Um, that is a great opportunity to also meet connections, future grad school jobs, future jobs in general, and you can go learn about stuff that you want to learn, pick and choose topics that you want to talk like that you're interested in, and get CEUs for it. So it's not hard. Don't let the fact that oh you have to get is it 15 two years now? Yeah, 15 two years now. You three seventy five and three. Don't let that number scare you because they are really easy to get, and they make it so you can I can take an online class and learn something <coughs> new and get CEUs for it. So it works. Um, other than that, it. questions. Yes. Hello. Oh, sorry. Um, so, what are some things that um, that we should consider when, like, logistical type items when you're first starting a job, um, such as uh, parking? meeting the staff mm -hmm. uh, at whatever type of setting you're in. So you mean like setting up meetings and meeting people? Or, I mean, they usually run you through it like at George Mason, you come in for your interview and they pretty much tell you what, okay, you'll need to buy a parking pass, this is how you do it. Like they take you on a campus tour, um, they give you pretty much like the layout of how it's gonna work and they introduce you with the coaches. For my first two weeks, I had um, one of the head athletic trainers come to practice with me and make sure I had the ropes. So they just felt too easy for the rules. They actually like, looked through it. And then the professor's pre graduate program um, made it really easy to transition as well and made sure I had everything I needed to get started. And did they also address the protocol for how you like, the chain of command, so to speak? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
kind of learned it the hard way because I missed a few steps that I wasn't <laughs> sure about. But um, they'll take you through, okay, if this happens, and you need to call 911. You need to notify this person, this person, this person, this person. Luckily, we have a, um, an event staff that actually we work through. So if we do need an ambulance call or anything along those lines, we report first to them. And then after the situation is taken care of, we go through our staff and our people. How did you choose Mason TA program? Okay, so when I was a junior at College Charleston, I was working with our men's basketball program. And uh, we actually, my family lives in Stafford, it's like 30 miles south of here, near Fredericksburg. So we got a bracket buster and College Charleston chose to play George Mason, the bracket buster at George Mason. So being a female and our basketball program, they only have male opponents, so I wasn't allowed to travel, so I was like, I asked my trainer, listen, you know, I'll stay at my house, and I'll meet you at the court for game night, and so that's what happened. Um, so I came up here, and I saw Debbie Corbata, who is now an athletic director at George Mason, um, and she was currently the head women's basketball trainer, and I told my athletic trainer that I wanted to walk up to her and tell her I would be just like her when I grew up. He was like, go for it. So I literally walked across the court, and I was like, hi, my name is Andrea Burt, I'm a junior, and I'll be just like you when I grow up. And she was like, okay. She was like, um, she told me about the GA spot. It opened up when I graduated, and I stayed in contact with her for two years, and that's how I got my spot. So, start now. This is important. You know, if you 